welcome to my channel. My name is Amanda and this is Birch and Lily, where I talk about all sorts of fun, crafty goodness. Today I have a really fun pattern video for you. I'm going to be going through my top nine scrappy blanket patterns. I have nine because I couldn't find ten. But because it's nine, you know that I have definitely picked my absolute favorite. I was really picky picking patterns for this video. So I really hope you enjoy and I hope you find some inspiration going through all of these patterns together. Before we jump on in, there are a few things that I'd like to say. First of all, where you can find me on the internet, birchandlilyfiber.com is my main website. And you can also find me on Instagram at birch.and.lily. Everything that I talk about today, as well as all of the links that you will need to find for patterns, where to find me, all of that is down down below in the description. Also, before we jump on in, I do want to talk about what I'm wearing because this pattern did go live on Ravelry today, the day I'm recording. So when this goes live, it went live yesterday. <laughs> so I'll stand up really quickly. I haven't worn this on the podcast yet, so I wanted to show it off uh, just in case you were looking forward to this pattern going live. This is the Marigold Tea. It's a pattern from Winter's Weather Knits that I test knit. And yeah, I will go into too much detail other than saying the pattern is live because that's not what today's video is about. But I do always try my best to make sure that you know when patterns I've tested have gone live. So this one's live. If you want to hear more about it, check last podcast episode, episode 133, I think, and it will tell you everything that you need to know about the marigold tea. So I'm going to start knitting because... Once I learned I could knit and talk during these videos, my whole world opened up. Um, I don't know why I didn't think about it filming the first couple ones, but I knit in the movie theater, I knit everywhere else, so why not knit while I film these videos? So I'm going to be knitting. I'm working on my resource raglan. I am so close to finishing this, so I'm really excited. Uh, I have about half of the sleeve left, so... Not very much left to go. Um, but let's jump into the nine patterns that I have pulled, the nine scrap blanket patterns. We'll start off with a classic that I think everyone knows about, the Coziest Memories Blanket by Kemper Ray. This is a beautiful pattern. Um, it leaves you with so many, all of these patterns. I guess I'll preface before I go further into the Coziest Memories blanket that every single one of these patterns, these blanket patterns that I talk about today, they're all customizable. That was something that was really important to me that you could go and use a different yarn weight, a different needle size, um, change the color patterning up, all of that sort of stuff. So if I say, for example, the pattern calls for fingering weight, that doesn't mean you have to use that. You could totally go and use a worsted weight or a sport weight. Now that will change up the yardage that the pattern might say you're going to use, um, but also changing the size of the pattern, like, or changing the size, rather, of the blanket you're going to make is going to change that. There's so many variables that can change yardage. So with that, I guess I would say don't pay attention to yardage, cast this on, do whatever you want, play, have fun. I think that's the joy of these scrappy blankets, is taking all of these leftovers that you have and just creating something beautiful and colorful and whimsical. So let's jump back into the Coziest Memories blanket. This pattern is free, which is amazing, and it's also full of information. I would call this one probably the original scrap blanket. I feel like all of the bigger name knitters and podcasters have made this one for good reason. It's just a really simple garter stitch square blanket. It gives you instructions on how to join everything as you go. So there's no seaming and you could even knit over your ends as you're working through it too to save having to weave in ends as well. It's really simple. There's so many different ways you can do it. You could just go in and go wild and have endless colors beside each other. You could create some sort of pattern with the squares. I just feel like the reason this pattern is so popular is because there's so much that you can do with it. The pattern itself does call to use fingering weight yarn. Uh, the gauge that it says you will get with the called for fingering weight and the called for needle is seven stitches by seven rows. That would equal 
one inch or 2.5 centimeters of knitting. It also says that each square, if you use, again, the called for yarn and needle size, will come out to about 3.5 inches square, or that's about nine centimeters square. But like I said, customizable, play to your heart's content, make this blanket something that you'll love. Um, I don't know if I stated at the beginning, and I'll try to do better with this as well, because there is a mix of knit and crochet patterns in this video. The coziest memory blanket is a knit pattern. Moving on to the next pattern that I've pulled. This is another knitting pattern. It is called the Beekeeper Quilt, and it is by Tiny Owl Knits. This one is really cool. I haven't seen anything like this before. It's hexagons, but they're knit double. Um, in the round. How that works, I don't know. I don't own this pattern, um, but I've seen so many people knit it and it's beautiful, so I, I trust this pattern. Um, but somehow it's knit in the round to make each hexagon double thick, so it's really, really squishy, and it almost looks like the hexagons are stuffed. I don't think they are. I think it's just the way that they're knit that makes them look so puffy. The pattern calls to knit these out of fingering weight yarn with a gauge of about 24 stitches by 34 rows. That will give you four inches or 10 centimeters of knitting. Um, and I think the other fun thing about this is that you knit each hexagon one at a time. So you could just take a whole bunch of scrap yarn on the go with you, knit a whole bunch of tiny hexagons, and then connect them together later. I couldn't find anywhere in the pattern notes to like say if they were seamed or if they were knit together by picking up stitches or anything like that. So I'm not a hundred percent sure how they're connected together, but I just think the portableness of this pattern is really fun. It's also full of information. It's got full color charts. It has a video blog with lots of information linked on the Ravelry pattern page. So there's lots of resources for you as well with this one. Um, if you want to look at that video, it is linked, like I said, on the Ravelry pattern page. So if you click the Ravelry link for this pattern down below, you could go look at that pattern page and it gives you, I think, even more information on the pattern. This is gonna be, I think, a fast one because with these being so versatile, there really isn't much to say because they're not so structured and stringent on what you have to do. But the next pattern I have pulled is the Moonflower Mosaic pattern. This is from Valerie Miller. It's another beautiful knit scrappy pattern and another portable one actually. So this pattern, you knit up these almost flower type motifs and then connect them all together. Um, something the pattern page did say that I do want to note is that each of these individual flower motifs are seamed. So if you don't like seaming, the pattern says it outright, you're not gonna like this pattern. But I do think even if you don't like seaming, you could make an individual little flower motif and make like a coffee mug rug or something like that, a coaster. I think it's a really versatile pattern even if you're not a fan of seaming. This pattern also calls for fingering weight yarn. It says you'll get a gauge of 24 stitches by 36 rows equaling 4 inches or 10 centimeters, but I think again, like with all of these, super customizable cast on with a needle that you love for fingering weight yarn or say you decide to use fingering weight held double, cast on with the needle size you think and just adjust accordingly. I apologize if my position looks like it changed. My husband just got home from work, so I had to go say hi to him, of course. Um, but let's get back into these blankets. The next one that I've pulled is a crochet pattern. This is called the Scrappy Herringbone Blanket, and it is a pattern from Tangerine Door Creations. This one reminds me a lot of the Northeasterly Blanket, which is something I've talked about a lot on this channel and is also next on my list. Um, but I just think this is kind of the crochet version of the blanket. It is only like half of the chevron, but you could totally knit it in a way that you could make it look like chevrons. So I don't know, it's just a really fun pattern and I loved that it was crocheted and it's so different from any other scrappy crochet blanket that I've seen. Most scrappy crochet blankets I've seen are either like a granny square or just that zigzaggy pattern. So I thought this one was really unique. It calls to use a four millimeter crochet hook or an H 
and it calls for worsted weight yarn. I think you could totally adjust this one as well. Pick the crochet hook you know that you like to use for whatever weight of yarn you're using and it'll work just fine. The pattern only comes in US terms, so if you are familiar with crocheting and you use UK terms, you will have to adjust that accordingly, but if you use US terms, this is perfect for you. And otherwise, it's knit with the corner to corner crochet technique. So if you're familiar with that, you'll have a great easy time, but I did also look and it's really easy to find tutorials for corner to corner crochet on YouTube, so it shouldn't be a problem. It's also crocheted with a join as you go method, so there's not going to be any seaming on this blanket. So let me set down my sweater here for a second and I want to grab my Northeasterly blanket because it's sitting right beside me. And if I'm gonna talk about it, I might as well show it if I'm working on one, right? So like I said, the next pattern that I've pulled is the Northeasterly Blanket. This is a beautiful pattern from Skeenanigans that I am slowly working away on, or at least I'm making my own version. Um, let's go through the information for it first though before I show you mine. This is a pattern, it's written for fingering and DK weight. The pattern that you purchase includes instructions for both weights of yarn, but you could also adjust that accordingly. There are instructions on how to weave in your ends as you go or knit over your ends if you're familiar with that technique. If you're not, it's included in the pattern. It also is a totally seamless pattern. You're not going to have to seam anything on this one, which is amazing. I also love that it's all knit up in garter stitch, so you're never purling. You're knitting the whole time on this. It has really neat slipped edge borders, and altogether it makes for a really classy and fun pattern to knit. Very very simple, very mindless. So yeah, let me, I'm gonna have to stand up because mine is getting huge and I don't think I've ever shown it not sitting on the channel before, so that's kind of fun. But let me show you my version of the Northeasterly blanket. So I still don't think I'm gonna be able to fit this whole thing in the screen. It's quite long. I eventually would like to have a king size blanket for our king sized bed, but Here's my Northeasterly. Um, I've seen a lot of people do theirs where they just have random colors all connected together. I don't like that. <laughs> not that their blankets aren't beautiful, but that's just not me. So this is what I've done with mine. I have alternated between scrap yarns and just some Knit Pick Stroll in the colorway Dove Heather. It's just a really simple gray. And yeah, you can tell. <laughs> I love this. I haven't pulled it out in a while, but I think I'm itching to do it again. That's kind of why I had the idea to do this video, is because I just feel like working on this again. So you might see it sometime soon on the podcast. Maybe I'll insert some b-roll here as well of the blanket kind of going through all the colors, but it's just so much fun and so simple and... I think it's a really great scrappy blanket pattern, especially if you've never really done them before. This is so mindless and you'll have the pattern for it memorized in no time. Gotta get myself uh, back to a point where I can knit on this sweater. I just had to do a decrease, so we'll mark that off and then I'll get back to going on this sleeve. So the next scrappy pattern I pulled is called the I Quilt 2 pattern. It's from A Little Knitty Designs. This is another knit one, and this one is so cool. I am holding onto this one in the back of my head for an advent knitting project. And interestingly enough, that is what this is designed to knit, or to use to knit it. Yeah, <laughs> um, this is designed to use with your advent knitting. It is the most beautiful pattern. It looks exactly like, like a, one of those heirloom, I don't even know what the type of quilt is called. I think it's so cool. Um, and it's knit in a really portable way as well. That's the one downside with the Northeasterly blanket is once it gets really big, it's really hard to take around with you. But this one is not that way. You knit it up in all of the individual squares of the pattern and then you'll eventually connect them all together. You will have to do a little bit of seaming to connect them together, but it's not too bad. Um, it's nice that at least you get to knit up the whole big squares before you have to seam anything. 
And it also has options to make this with a border, without a border, so there's a little bit of flexibility in that way as well. So yeah, if you're itching to use up some advent skeins or a whole advent calendar that you have kicking around, I think this is a really great choice. Another fun pattern is the A Stitch in Time blanket from KF Jones. This one is another fingering white knit blanket, and it's really cute. This one also reminds me a lot of a quilt, um, and it's worked up in blocks again like the previous pattern, so it's really portable as well. Each scrap needs no more than five grams of yarn, so it's nice to know that if you are working this pattern on the gauge called for, you're really not going to need very much yarn, so I think this one's really versatile in that way, and you'll be able to play with color a lot. This one is really packed full of information. If you haven't knit a lot of scrappy blankets before, or if this is going to be your first scrappy blanket, there's a schematic included on how to put the pattern together, as well as photo tutorials. Something else I thought was really fun when I was reading through this one was that the pattern was designed basically to knit a block a month. So if you knit one little individual square a month on this, after 12 months, you should have a really nice full-sized scrappy blanket. Okay, we are down to the final two patterns. This next one I pulled is actually, it holds a special place in my heart. When I first started working with fiber, I was a crocheter and this pattern is what got me into crochet when I saw the hexy love actually blanket pattern from the green letter day I fell in love and I knit probably I'm trying to think how many blankets I knit that were hexagons one I think I knit four or five hexagon blankets in the span of a year after seeing this one. The Hexy Love actually blanket pattern is beautiful. It gives you instructions on how to knit either solid colored hexagons or the multicolor hexagons you're seeing on the screen right now. It also gives you information on how to join as you go and it's kind of just a follow your own adventure pattern. It doesn't give you much information on gauge or anything. It just says cast on and go and have fun and make a beautiful scrappy blanket. The hexagons on this one remind me a lot of like flowers or a starburst. Um, I think it's really cool and it would be fun also to mix some multicolor hexagons in with some solid color ones. The final blanket I've pulled is another crochet one. Um, I probably could have sorted this video a little bit better by knitting and crochet, but I think it's fun to see a couple options kind of interspersed in between. This is the Battenberg Blanket. It is a pattern by Sandra Paul, and if you are a starting crochet scrappy blanket maker, I think this one is great for you. It's a really basic square, like granny square-esque type pattern. It has really tiny squares in it, but you could also make them bigger by adding some more rounds or changing the weight of yarn that you use or the hook size that you use. This is also a free pattern, which is great if you've never crocheted a scrappy blanket before. You don't have to put any money down on a pattern just to decide that maybe scrappy crochet blankets aren't for you, you can just jump on in and give it a try. It's a super easy, basic granny square motif. You can add a border to this pattern, and it's also chock full of information. There are photo tutorials, there are schematics, there are video tutorials, there's basically anything a beginner or seasoned crocheter could need to make this blanket. And yeah, I think it's a really great simple one. Sometimes I think the simpler patterns are the most eye-catching ones. Okay, my friends, that is all that I have pulled for this video. I hope you found some inspiration. I hope you cast on your very own scrappy blanket to use up some of those scrap yarns you have kicking around. I think they're a wonderful way to make a lovely heirloom piece to keep in your family for generations, and they're just so much fun. And there's something you can pick up and put down so many times throughout your lifetime. There's no real commitment to it because it's such a long-term project. You could pick it up and then put it down for a year and then pick it up again later, and you're still going to have as much fun with it as you did at the beginning. If you have any 
questions about anything that I've talked about today, please let me know. You can leave a comment down below in the description or send me an email. My email is linked down below as well. And yeah, if you haven't subscribed already, please consider doing so. It helps the channel out so much. You can give the video a like as well to let me know that you're enjoying this type of content. I will see you next week for a regular podcast episode. Bye.